Ladies and gentlemen, look at her. Her hair's growing even more. Jeez, you know, it's very becoming now. Uh, Julius Caesar here in front. Yeah, this is Ronnie Bennett. This is uh, an ex. If the name is familiar, it's because she's my ex-wife. Um, how many years since you're, you were my ex-wife? Let's see. And was it 19? 71, whatever that is. 71. Was that when you left or was that when we got the divorce? That's when I left. Oh, okay, so the divorce was about six years after that. A long time. You we, wouldn't sign the papers. We, uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't sign the papers. That's right. Huh. Well, I mean, I was in no rush to marry somebody else, so it didn't, you know, it didn't get in my way too much. But every time my lawyer sent you something, it just, nothing ever happened. You never responded. Can, can I tell you a funny story about how my ego got to me in that situation? So, so I'm walking into uh, WPLJ, which was down on 6th Avenue and... I don't know, right. it was the 53rd, something like that. Right. And I'm walking up the steps to go to work at, at uh, for my 2 o'clock in the morning show. So I mean, uh -huh. it was pretty late. And a guy comes up to me, and he goes, are you Alex Bennett? And I went, yeah. And he said, I am such a fan of yours. And he put his hand out to shake hands with me. And I shook hands with him, and he had a piece of paper in his hand. And when he removed it, I had the piece of paper, and he said, you've been served. And it was, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's great. I didn't know that story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's one that you may or may not remember. Yeah. We went to New York mm -hmm. uh, and started the talk show, and it uh, was a WMCA and then. And she was my producer, by the way. Yeah. Yes. And it was a WMCA then. Um. Do you remember who our first guest was? I would say it was. Uh, um, um, I'm I'm going to bet, okay, that it was I, Michael Donahue. No. Paul Krasner. Yes. Okay. Now, after the show, we three mm -hmm. went for it was whatever time the show was on. It was late at night, like midnight, when we got out of the studio. Mm -hmm. And we went down to the village, which you and I didn't know much about New York yet then, and went for a middle-of-the-night breakfast, as was done there, at the um, David's Pop Belly. Was yeah. the Let, let's say that at this time I also did a Saturday. I'm telling a story. No, 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 but I'm trying to, because I just said I went on at 2 o'clock in the morning, and that was a WPLJ. This was a WMCA. Yes. Okay. You just, you, my timing's all gone. Oh, you go, you go ahead. Go ahead. I will, I will shut up. So we go to David's Pop Ballet. Mm -hmm. You and I had never been there before. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it only recently closed a few years ago. Really? It was there forever and ever and ever. And, um, and it had been there forever when we went there in 1969, was it, when we got to New York? 68? Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. So we're having our breakfast. I remember being the, provincial me i had never seen anything such as a peanut butter omelet on the menu things right. like that right and uh and we just chattered and the more we talked with each other the more that i found that krasner and i knew a lot of people in common and i finally said something about it i said i'm amazed that we know have all these people in common and never met before today and he said to me i later found out this was a common phrase in such situations, but I didn't know it. It was brand new to me then. And he said, but Ronnie, don't you know there are really only 500 people in the world and sooner or later we'll all know each other? <laughs> and of course this came up because uh, Paul Krasner died this week. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, he, uh, was, he, was eight, just seemed, he was 87. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's fine. I mean, that's good to live that long but it's you know we're at that time of life when you know whether it's good friends or people we've known in passing here and there as work or whatever you know more and more of us are uh, shuffling off this mortal coil as it were and uh, it, it just you know the, the, the kind of the, the even though I hadn't I guess it was about 8 or 10 years since I last spoke to Paul mm -hmm. um, there are people that are Lots and lots of people who are on the periphery of our lives, mm -hmm. as opposed to really close, or the people we speak to really often. 
and more and more of those are falling away, you know, and it, it changes, it changes the atmosphere of your being in a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, I mean, it, and it's funny too. I mean, uh, I've lost a lot of people recently and I, I'm losing more and more people as I grow older, you know, more and more people I've known uh, wind up dying. And, um, I lost a friend, uh, this guy ran the Moonlight Bunny Ranch, Dennis Hoff, about a year ago. And um, he died, and he was like only in, I mean, 62, 63, something like that. Yeah, so There's no, I, you know, I don't make those distinctions. We die when we die. Um, I, make, I, I, were, I, I only make the distinction, Ronnie, because sometimes they're younger and sometimes they're older. I mean, when Paul died at 87, you got to go, okay, he was 87. But when somebody dies younger and you know them, you go, hey, he was supposed to be around after I was gone. You know? Well, you know, I, I, and you can dwell on that or you can get on with everything. Um, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm just talking about whatever their age is. Yeah. Those people that aren't everyday people in your life, but they're, there fairly regularly, um, it, it sort of makes little holes in your little world, you know? It, yeah. And the holes keep getting bigger. Well, you, you, bigger. you know, so about, you get... about people that we know and that we lose contact with, I mean, I wrote a thing on my Facebook page that said, my only regret is, is that I hadn't talked to Paul recently. Uh, you know, I think we stopped talking to each other maybe 20, 25 years ago because the distance between us grew. In other words, he was living somewhere and I was moving somewhere and uh, when I lived in New York Paul was a common factor you know because we lived here and we knew the same people and we did the same things and then as years went on uh, I still knew Paul in fact when I was in San Francisco he came to me and he wanted I think it was five thousand dollars to save the realist so I shelled out five thousand dollars to save the realist uh, so, I mean, that's, we were close enough that he could come to me and hit me up for 5,000 uh, bucks. And then he paid me back. And I think I may have talked to him on one or two occasions uh, after that, but over the years, we just didn't, we weren't talking. It wasn't that we were mad at each other or that whatever. It just it stopped communicating. And I'm not the most sociable person anyway, so I don't reach out as easily as other people do. But I just felt bad about it because I always liked Paul. Paul was a terrific guy, you know. Uh, yes, yeah. he was. It was very, very sad. But, you know, we, we lose them all, you know. And uh, I, I've discovered that the, the, the good thing about old age is that you got older. And the bad thing about old age is you lose people. You, you suddenly become prone to diseases you never thought you were going to get. Uh, you know, I'm told with like prostate cancer, you live long enough, you're going to have it. At, at 90 years of age, the chances you're going to have prostate cancer, cancer are 100%. <laughs> okay? So there's yeah. always something out there trying to get you, you know? And uh, quite frankly, even with your, your maladies, uh, the fact of the matter is um, you've lived beyond your life expectancy, you know? By about a year, you know, but, but you know, nobody, those are always averages. They aren't, you know, they aren't set in stone because they're averages. And I know of, I don't know the man, but I know of one man with my kind of cancer, pancreatic, who's around, I think it must be seven, eight years now. Nobody, barely anybody makes it past that the five year standard that the medical profession uses on cancer survival. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so he and he's doing fine, um, but so, so, you know, so it's different for every person. Those exactly. are only averages. And I, um, you know, I'm having a little bit of a hard time now with I have a new mystery malady nobody has figured out yet, and it's really irritating. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, we're working on that. Plus, day before yesterday, do these things drive you crazy? I'm working here at the desk. I'm typing away, writing a blog post or some email or something. And I hear click, click, click. And the keyboard stops working. Well, what in the world does that mean? So this is like one in the afternoon or something. Now, do you have a desktop I, or do you have a, poor, uh, a laptop that you use? 
No, it's a desktop. They oh, have a great okay. big monitor. And oh, all. okay, because yeah. And it's a, it's a Bluetooth keyboard. Right. And so you know, I tried to do different things. And nothing would happen. And for some reason, I, in a cupboard, I have four or five keyboards. I don't know why. You, I don't know which. You never ones throw them broken. away. Yeah. I don't know which ones may be broken, or which ones don't work, or or whatever. So. They're supposed to be universal these days, but, you know, they might be pretty old in that cupboard. So I hauled them all out, and, of course, because they're Bluetooth, they all have uh, ha have um, batteries. That, yeah. And I figure they've been in the cupboard for several years. I better replace the batteries before I start testing them. And um, that, that didn't help a lot. But at any rate, it took me five, count them, five hours to fix my keyboard boy does that irritate me yeah you know it just <sighs> made me crazy you know you at know at least i can do little things like that though i mean because you're talking 200 or more techie bill if i had to call somebody you know I, when i was working in television uh they always preferred to wire me up with a microphone that was wired rather than wireless just because yeah. there were too many problems with an interference from signals but and so on and so forth. That's a long time ago. That's yeah, no longer yeah, well, a problem. Well, but I mean, the the point is, is that I'm still a very big advocate of hardwire. You know that that I I have a, a Bluetooth keyboard here, but you know it every now and then. But it wasn't the Bluetooth that was wrong with it. Well, I, in in what was so what was wrong with yours that you had to put in five different I don't keyboards? Know, something inside it stopped working, and I found another one. Fine, you. I don't. Even, I will not put you through the agony of all I had to <laughs> just get the get onto online or anything to ask questions. Do you ever I find yourself? Do you ever find yourself? Laptop to get online. What? Do you ever find yourself saying life's too short for this? Well, it's not so much that it's too short, is that it's gotten too complicated for me. You know, a light switch either turns the light on or it doesn't. There are only two, maybe three possible solutions. The light bulb is burned out. That's the easy one. Uh, something is wrong with the circuitry inside the wall. Mm. And I can't think of a third one right now. But there's not too much you have to check. Right. But when a, when a keyboard just, up, you know, goes puts his feet up in the air and says, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, you don't know where to start. There are too many things that could cause it. When I was getting ready for this chat, I pulled up uh, the, the Skype thing, and I was just checking settings, and I've got no video feed. It's just black, just nothing. And, um, what, and now what, you know? Uh, so I go and ask the question online. Why, you know, why is my Skype screen black? And you can ask things that way these yeah, days. Yeah, of course. Reasonable yeah. answers. And, uh, oh, my God, the first two or three that looked legitimate had lists this long about all the things you had to do and change in the background. It can't possibly be that hard. And then I realized I had left open my browser and two or three other things. So I closed everything down. I went back to Skype, and there I was, all shining and bright um, and smiling. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah. So that one wasn't too difficult. But, uh, you know, it's, yeah, you're right. Life is too short. And also, it, more than that, it's really irritating, techie stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. Uh, and, and especially when you know perfectly well that some really good techie could have walked into my house and done well, that, 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 that for about four seconds and everything would be fine. There, there are a lot of, you know, your, your blog, which is timegoesby.net, uh, deals with aging. And, and we would like to think that, oh, aging is a wonderful time of life when you can retire and you can do this and you can do that. But actually, there are so many things that start happening. And the thing that I have noticed, because I, you know, I've always been into technology, you know that, and I pretty much understand technology. But now I get a new device and I can't even figure out how to make it work. You know, well, because. First of all, they don't. They, for as long as there have been home computers, there have been problems with the 
with the manuals that help you. They're all written in some other language and translated, so it makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, I, I'm getting a little thing that's going to switch video uh, uh, tactically because I'm finding that I'm having problems with the program that I'm using. And um, I, I, I go online to see how you hook it up, and I'm, I'm, I'm befuddled. I, I just, you know, I used to be able to almost intuitively not even have to go to a manual. I could just intuitively make something work, but well, I can't. I can't do that. I can't. I it's can't, all difficult. I can't do that anymore, <laughs> and it makes me feel fucking old. That's my problem. Oh, but you know, young people don't know either on a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, it's just that it's poorly done. They don't put much effort into making sure we understand. And when they do write out something. It's in technical ease that there's such a word, you know, in that like in their language, and they forget that there are all kinds of techy uh, shortcuts in in terms of words well, well, and me, verbiage that yeah. you and I don't understand, but they do. Let me ask you a metaphysical situation, okay? So <laughs> I'm, I'm no, really no, I'm word. I'm watching this these documentaries on the planets that the BBC did. Right. And they go, and Mars, 2.4 billion years ago, blah, 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 blah. And they throw off 2.4 billion, like, oh, this is 2.4. And I'm thinking, 2.4 billion. Let's see, how much of my life is that 2.4 billion? And then I suddenly say to myself, I'm fucking insignificant. Yes. You know, I'm but just, I'm not even, that. I'm not even the size of a grain of sand in 4.5 billion. All right. But don't ever forget Neil deGrasse Tyson, who said it so beautifully, and it happens to be true, not just a metaphor. It's we are all made of stardust. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, that's really lovely, but that doesn't make me cope with death any better, you know, or more mortality well, any better. What, am I going to go back and be stardust floating around, uh, or uh, what? You well, know. No, there's no point in pondering the afterlife since no one knows. But, but, what, but think of my, my little... 79 years compared to 4.5 billion. billion. Yes, exactly. You Who know, cares? it's like, and then <laughs> then I'm walking down the street the other day going to a dental appointment, and I look into, like, you know, one of these eatery places, you know, where people are sitting around getting lunch and so on. And I look in there and I go, you know, everybody in this restaurant, at least within 75 years, is going to be dead. And I'm thinking... Why do we make such a big deal about all the things that we fight over and, and that why do people, certain people feel compelled to make other people's lives miserable when we have such a short amount of time in comparison to the history of the universe? That's to, a lovely thought. That's to kind lovely. of enjoy ourselves. You know, why are there Hitlers? Why are there Trumps? Uh, not that I want to compare the two because, you know, Hitler did serve in the military. Uh, <laughs> oh, Alex, that's <laughs> um, uh, you know, and I and I go, why why do we play all these games, and why do we why do we fight in Congress over very? I mean, it's also insignificant. Can't we just put ourselves in the context of four point five billion years, and that we have a, <laughs> such a short time here on this planet to do something good? You know. Am I being too Pollyanna? No, 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 no. I don't think so. Um, I suppose that's an age-old question. If I knew enough of ancient philosophy, I'll bet one of them asked that question too. Yeah, but I mean, um, you know, people who were here a uh, hundred years ago are no longer here. The whole planet has, for the most part, been wiped away, and a whole new population has been swept in. And, um, but it happens one person at a time. It happens you know, one person like at a time, it. so we don't notice it. But but it, it does happen that way. And, uh, you know, uh, the people who are going to be running this planet 100 years from now are not the people who are here now. And uh, I hope that maybe they're wiser than we were, is what I'm thinking. You know, I, I doubt it. I think it's only going to get worse, you know. But I don't know. I don't you, know. You, you know, I, yeah, go. But. It gets closer as my, you know, time goes by with this disease, mm -hmm. and nobody knows how long I'll be okay, but as I get, you know, every day that goes by is getting closer and closer to my end, however long it may be, I don't ask those kinds of questions anymore. I more and more sit here 
in right now. You know, I'm looking at a picture of mm-hmm. the guy I used to be married to, and mm-hmm. we're talking about stuff. I don't, I'm not so sure why anybody watches this. It seems to me that this is just, you know, sitting around and shooting the breeze. But, um, and I've got some things I want to do later today when we're done. And uh, I've got things over the weekend. I mean, and I don't get much further than that anymore. Um, it's all trying to just be sit here and be now. Yeah. That's, you know, yeah. um, or whoever's at the other end of the phone or whatever's going on. Um, and it's, you know, does it ever, does it happen to you? It's, it's, it's been very, very rare, rare in my life. And I think they used to call it flow, but when, particularly when I'm writing a blog post and I've got all of my facts that I need written down next to me and scribbles on on a notepad of things I want to be sure to include and whatever, and I'm deeply into it, when I get toward the end and I'm ready to go back to the top and take a look at it and what's good or bad or anything, I realize that that's all I've been doing. My whole consciousness was in writing this, what's usually about a 750 word essay. and. And that's all. And it was such a pleasure that I felt so good. And I didn't even understand what fun I was having while I was doing it because I was so deeply into the details of what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And it's just the most wonderful feeling. I just love it. Does it happen to you? Oh, well, it's happened to me in the radio business. Yeah, where, you know, I walk away from a show and say, boy, that was fun. Yeah, boy, that was good. Boy, that was fulfilling. When you're doing something, huh? Just it takes up your whole, your whole mind. Your you whole know, I, it, it's funny when I when I was when they fired me from Sirius. The first thought that went through my mind, well, that's it. You know, my career's over in radio because I, I was uh, I was uh, 74 at the time, and I went. Nobody's going to hire me. Maybe I was 73. Uh, nobody will hire me at this age. So it's over with. And they went, oh, no, it's not over with. You're Alex Bennett. You'll find another job. Bullshit. You know, you walk in. You once described to me that you went into an HR person, sat down with them, and because of your age, they looked at you like you were a Martian. You right. know. Or their grandmother. <laughs> yeah, or their grandmother. <laughs> you know, and not that you had any competence, you know. And, um, and I also said, this is also my death sentence. Uh, it, it, now, my life may go on in my 80s and whatever, but, but not doing what I do every day, that, that ritual of going in, going to work, doing the job, doing the work, robbed of that, uh, you start to waste away a little bit. You but know? You have, look, at you have a show now you do. We yeah. have our little chats you put in it. Um, and it's, it's essentially the same thing you did for near 50 years or so, but in, in a new format, in a new delivery system, where I got lucky is before I was in the position happened to me that happened to you, different mm-hmm. business, but, yeah. um, but same kind of thing, is the year or two before I had started envisioning, just thinking about, uh, blog, blogs were ba- bra- brand new then, um, right. 15 years ago, of doing one, of, I had already been researching growing old for a few years, for five or six or seven years, of I could put this all gradually, day by day, in a blog. And I had started to do it in the evenings or the mornings before leaving for work, so that by the time that came, I was ready to go. You know? yeah. And in my area, I ended up doing pretty much the same thing that you ended up doing in a new way. And what's good about it is that even before I was diagnosed with cancer, I'm 78 now, that would be when I was 76, I was slowing down. I I was very healthy. You know, as my primary care doctor said to me early on after the cancer diagnosis, he said, you know, Ronnie, except for the cancer, you're very healthy. Except for the cancer, right, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And... uh, uh, and I was, I was, but over this time, I, you know, especially with the cancer, I've really slowed down. You can't do that at work anymore, <laughs> you know. So I can work on my own timetable, 
And if I'm too tired to do a blog post any day or I've got something better to do, I can do that, which you can't do that with a paid job, you know, when you go to work for someone else. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an advantage when you are slowing down and don't have as much energy. And uh, and that's sure true for me. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I, I go back to the old story that uh, I, I literally, and I will take claim to this, invented the podcast. Because I started doing it because I was out of work and I decided, oh, I got my little website here. I'll just do a daily radio thing, you know, and people can then come and listen to it. Another guy came along and said, hey, I just built you a program that you can put up that people can download. And then if they have it on their computer, every day it will go to your site and see if there's a new episode and it will download it to their machine. It's an automatic download. Yeah. yeah. Nobody had ever done that before. You know, and that I invented the podcast. So shouldn't I be tired of it by now? <laughs> you know, you know it, I mean, I've always said I would do this until I was bored and I've never gotten bored. It's um, I when I started way over 20 years ago, just the research part of it mm -hmm. before there was a blog. I didn't know how interesting getting old is. And it just continues to be having done it so long now. Um, now that, by the way, that old things, old people have become a thing now in the media uh, because they keep expanding the number of it, and they're taking over. You know, not taking over, but taking over the the statistics. There yeah, are many, right, many right. more old people than right. there used to be. So they write about it more, and so I'm in a much better shape because I've been doing it for so long to determine what's valuable information and what's bullshit. Mm -hmm. And um, and there's an awful lot of junk floating around out there about old people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but there's also some good stuff coming along. People that are, whether it's medical information made easy to understand or whatever else, there's some very good people, ageism, good people doing good work on that. And, you know, these things don't change overnight. When you think they're perfectly logical, it can still take 50 years for something to really change in social. Let me, let me ask you one last question. We're running, we're, we're, we're running way past what we normally spend here. But let me ask you a question because you've lived to be 78 now, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, if you could go back in your entire life uh, and change any one thing, do you know what that would be? Silence. <laughs> yeah, um, I am not, uh, you know, everything that happened to me has made me who I am now. Mm -hmm. And everything, uh, and, and I'm relatively happy with myself. So I wouldn't want to shift anything that would change that, although the same thing might have happened. Um, but here's the one thing that I think I wish I could have done, and there's no time, of course, now, is you and I were married together five or six years that, mm -hmm. until we broke up. I lived with another man a few years later for four years. Mm -hmm. And other than that, I've been on my own. I haven't lived with anybody or married anybody since then. I would like to know the experience of what it would be like to be married to someone from a fairly young age, let's say early 20s, up until however long you both live, of all the stuff you would go through, all of the miseries that would come up, or arguments or fights or resentments that you'd have to work yourself through, and year after year do that and find that you still love one another. I can never experience what that is. And that's the one thing that I, I just want to know what it feels like at the other end. And of course I can't ever do that. But that's not really a regret. That's just another life experience that I didn't choose or the world didn't choose to bless me with. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know? the, the reason you never remarried was because after perfection, 
in your previous oh, marriage. Please, no, you know, <laughs> you can also go the other way with that. Oh, I'm not going to take a chance that it's that bad again. I'm just glad that when I said, <laughs> what would you change? The first thing that came to mind was not marrying you. Okay. So I, <laughs> you were afraid I was going to say that. I, I was, I was it figuring. It crossed my mind, yeah, believe was, me. Hey, listen, we've really run out of time here by about five minutes. I, yeah, I love talking to you, you know. And uh, I hope I get to talk to you for a long time to come, you know. Well, see how it tests next week. Yeah, well, you know, and I've got my uh, appointment for a second opinion. So, you know, but, <laughs> but my situation is is my is a bad cold compared to what you've got, you know. Oh, you know, it just, it is what it is. Don't but make it, a big it, thing. it drove me absolutely, threw me, threw me into depression. So I can only believe what you've gone through. And you've gone through it so gracefully. And I'm so proud. I'm so proud of you. You know. you know, sometimes you just forget that it's going. I, we'll save that for another. Okay. Time. Anyway, because you know. But anyway, uh, I love you, and I love talking to you, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay. Okay, babe. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett.